Greetings from Bethel Memorial Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Brent, and tonight is another uh, Wednesday night prayer challenge that I want to share. Uh, we had a good prayer meeting tonight, some praise. Always thankful when we have praises to thank the Lord for it. And then new prayer requests and ongoing prayer requests. And just remembering we give it to the Lord and we walk with him. Um, we also have our youth group that meets uh, Inferno Ministries that meets. Um, and, and we also started a new ministry called Divorce Care tonight, trying to support those people who are going through the pain uh, of, of a divorce or a separation. So it's been a good night here and a good day at the church. We had our men's ministry in the morning at breakfast and had a Bible study afterwards. So it was just, it's been a good day. And I just, uh, at the middle of the day, I have, have some back problems right now. And it's just every so often they just start to really bother me. And, and, uh, I, I Lord, in the midst of the good, there's bad. There's so many things. How do we handle life? And I kind of sat down and and just got caught up in some Bible reading that I had been behind uh, reading through the Bible in a year. And I wound up listening to a, a, a whole book of the Bible uh, that, that that by the number of days that I did. Uh, I, I asked the group tonight, I said, who's the greatest king of the Old Testament? And our wise board chairman said, it depends on how you um, measure that. And I said, okay, who was the one with the most riches and the most splendor? And of course they said Solomon. And I said, who's the one that had the the, the closest relationship with the Lord? And then they said, David. And uh, there are some other uh, good Kings at the end that walked closely with the Lord as well. But we think of David and Solomon and so on. But I want to read some verses from uh, the book that I listened to today, Ecclesiastes. Uh, Solomon wrote Ecclesiastes and I want us to hear some of, of what he went through in who he was. But let me pray first. Father, I thank you for your great love, and I thank you for the opportunity to just look into your word briefly, and I ask that you would bless us to know you because of this time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ecclesiastes 1, the first two verses, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, vanity of vanities, says the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity, emptiness. That's what he's talking about. The word vanity is actually the word able, where um, we know that Adam and Eve, after they fall into sin, named their second son Abel, vanity, emptiness. They knew that what they had in the garden was gone and they were living in a vain vanity life. And that's what Ecclesiastes is all about. Solomon lived at a time of peace because of his father David and all the conquering he did. He lived at a time of plenty. And he decided after he had got, asked God for wisdom that he would test all the things of this world to see how, how you could enjoy them. And at the beginning of the book, he says, it's all empty. At the end of the book, he said, the things of this world are all empty. No matter how many riches you have, no matter how much wine you drink, no matter how many relationships you have, no matter, he just, he went through the whole book. It's an, it's an amazing book. Um, and just hearing him make this statement is just uh, uh just a what where's he going to go well he does sum up the book in chapter 12 uh the first verse says remember also your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come and the years draw near of which you will say i have no pleasure in them what do you think about that our church started as a sunday school trying to help kids come to know the lord we uh pray tonight for all the schools that are starting up we need to pray for our schools because there are people with an agenda teaching our children to not look to a creator, to not uh, think about things that that are eternal. Talk, think, they just they're, we're great bringing people up to think whatever you feel is true, and there you just do you act on whatever you feel. To to recognize that the wisest man who ever lived, as far as a human being, uh, other than Jesus, he was also a human being, but of God. But uh, he he said, I just checked everything out. And this is what I say. Remember your creator, because as the longer you live, the more the days are going to seem evil and the more it's going to seem vain. I have no pleasure in the things there. So and then at the very end of the book, he says, the end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. See, this life is a, a small part of what eternity is going to be about. 
and we start thinking about eternity, we better think about how God is going to view how we live this life. And, and again, Solomon, uh, he he went through a lot. He he, you could say he walked away from God. You could say that, however, but at the end, he realized what was most important uh, to know that the best thing we could do in this life is fear God and keep His commandments. Uh, this is the whole duty of man. Um, and, and to think about that. So in addition to listening to the book of Ecclesiastes, I opened up my daily bread and today's daily bread was from a verse um, that I want to share in a moment. But I asked this question tonight, who's the greatest apostle? Who's the most successful apostle? And again, all of them were successful if they lived out their calling. But when we think about the, the vastness of a, of a ministry, we, we, we think of a, apostle Paul. He planted so many churches he wrote so much of the New Testament. He was it was an apostle that God used to do so many things. And in another place where I was reading in my devotion, uh, Paul was talking to the Corinthian church and saying, hey, listen, I, I didn't take a wife so I could focus more on the ministry. And I could, you know, and, and he, he's, he's defending his ministry because they're kind of turning their back on him. And, and, and just knowing that Paul was a tremendous success. What surprised me in the devotional from the Daily Bread today was this verse, Philippians 3, 8. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. I, I want you to think about that. I, I'm a minister and I want to see success. I want to see a fruit. I want to see, Paul saw a lot of fruit. But as I read this, he's saying, you know, the things in this life that I act like are important sometimes, they're all loss. The most important thing is to know Jesus Christ, my Lord. And that, it, it, it kind of blessed me as I was thinking, here's Solomon with basically the same conclusion. Obey your creator. Remember your creator. Obey God and his commandment. And here's Paul saying, all the things that I've done in this life, I consider loss compared to knowing Jesus Christ. I hope that encourages you tonight. Uh, we have to face the emptiness of life. It's all around us. But we can face the emptiness of this life by knowing Christ. Father, I thank you for your great love and the truth of your word. From beginning to end, we see a theme. And the goal from your word is not to know your word. The goal is to know you through your word. And I pray that we would be more and more able to do this. Thank you, Father, for who you are and all that you will do. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless.